Every film presents a different set of obstacles. Your story tests you as a filmmaker. When you write in a film, you don't want to be paralyzed by, how am I going to do that or how much is this going to cost? So you just write it and figure it out when the time comes. It's what keeps you creative. One of my first challenges was finding a trash truck for a film called Trash Day. It was, a it was about a woman in love with her trash man. The story was the easy part. Getting my hands on a trash truck and achieving the shots that I wanted, well, that was another story. We searched all around San Antonio for a place that would be willing to let us borrow, and it turns out it's unsafe to drive and hang off the sides of a, a trash truck without any real experience. So we got a lot of no's. After being turned down by different waste management companies, we found a place on the east side that was willing to let us take one for free. No questions asked. We just had to bring it back. Wow, that was pretty trusting. Bam, now we could shoot. But how was I going to get the shots that I wanted? After coming up with some brainstorming, this is what we came up with. The final product went on to premiere at South by Southwest and was accepted at several film festivals that year. If I had told myself early on that I couldn't write this because getting a trash truck would be next to impossible, I would have never shot that film and had the opportunity to travel to South to San Francisco, LA, New York, to go screen the film at those festivals. Up next, getting this shot without a helicopter. I mean, I had access because I worked at KSAT back then and I flew in Sky 12 often, but it was for news purposes only, not for flying around getting shots for movies, so I had to get creative. I took my small camera up to get aerials of SA between news shoots, but shooting down from 8,000 feet up, people look like ants, and the zoom doesn't zoom that far. So I intercut the aerials with ground shots because they're easier to get. And then I found the tallest residential building downtown, knocked on some stranger's door and asked if I could shoot outside their window to the ground. They were cool with it. So I had the actor run up, up and down the street several times and I put sound effects to make it look like it was coming from an actual, actual chopper. Bam, done. So as a filmmaker, we think in terms of visuals. We often storyboard or sketch out some of our shots and strive to get what we see in our heads up onto the screen. Take this still for example. It's a family standing outside their home after they've just been evicted. So this is in our heads. So we go crazy on set trying to communicate that to the crew. And this is the shot. Let's make it happen. After about an hour and a half of setup time, light adjustments, and a crew of about 20 people working, this was our final product. It's amazing when, we hear, when we're able to see our thoughts come to life on the screen. It's a great feeling, and it becomes addictive. It's always fuel for the next project. In the film Screesebox, I wrote a dream sequence that involved an elaborate mural collapse. The mural, the mural was a family portrait set in a desolate neighborhood. Jesus, what was I thinking? How was I going to create a giant mural out of bricks and have it collapse, let alone find someone to paint it in the style I was looking for? So we had a photo session set up for a portrait portion of the mural, and I messaged every muralist I could find that had a mural on the west side. That's the style I was looking for. Luckily, artist David Blancas got my vision and agreed to paint the mural for us on a giant canvas. That's him showing us the final touches. So now we need to build the actual wall. But how do we build a giant wall without crushing our talent? Into Ryan Britton from the art department. He came up with a design using light wood, cardboard, rope, and one person to pull it all down safely. He did a great job. And uh, this is the actual wall we used during the... Uh, filming. And here's a final product, a portion of the dream sequence. We went through months of work, collaboration, and brainstorming on how to achieve this shot that only lasted about 10 seconds. But it was necessary to the story. A viewer shouldn't have to think about all that went behind the scenes and all the trials the filmmaker had. They should just be wrapped up in your story. Also in Squeezebox, I wrote a scene that involved a giant cat, a human-sized cat, that's tearing up an accordion in a garage. These are some of the sketches that we had in mind for the look of the cat. I had a special effects friend take on the task, but he ended up getting a crazy gig that he couldn't pass up, so I had to look elsewhere. Funny thing is, sometimes you explain your ideas in your head to a professional, and they want to push their ideas on you. I explained the idea of the cat to a company in Austin, and this is what they sent back as an idea. Uh, no. And they wanted to charge over $2,000 for the job. Apparently, there was no way they could do it cheaper. So as a filmmaker, sometimes you have to be resourceful. This is a final product, and it costs only $300. My talented friend Eric Fonseca made this mask out of found materials and the eyes out of glass marbles. The art department's Brittany Ingram played the cat, and Jared Davis, our visual effects guy, brought the eyes to life. And the best part is, it's exactly what I wanted. 
so much cheaper than what I had originally thought it would be. In a recent film I did for Luminaria, I wanted to branch out and create something that could interact with the environment on a larger scale, something a little more interactive, visually appealing, but still based on story. I wanted to see a flamenco dancer, dancer smash this building to pieces. So we started by taking measurements of the building to map it out. So I don't know much about flamenco, so I started searching for a dancer, and I found Olivia Chaclin in Austin. She was a perfect dancer for this scale. It needed to be a creative dancer that could fuse a traditional dance with some contemporary music. This is us coming up with the choreography in Austin. We shot most of the film on a green screen downtown with her and Luis, my guitarist. And after endless hours of visual effects work, layers upon layers in After Effects, Jared was able to create the environment for the projection map for the big night. This is a final product. Thousands of people came out that night and were able to see the massive projection that was in my head just six months before. Again, there was a vision I just didn't know how I was going to make it happen. But with the help and collaboration of some talented friends and colleagues, I was able to bring it to life. In most of these cases, there were friends and colleagues that helped make the ideas into a reality. Without them, it wouldn't have been possible. In the end, it's all about those connections, the people you meet and choose to surround yourself with. Create good work and challenge yourself and your peers, and they'll be there for you. And hopefully, you'll have fuel for the next project, no matter how big or small. Thank you.